Okay, I'd like to call this finance committee meeting to order. First item is assignment for request for council action. We have 17119, amend salaries and benefits code section 3114, sick leave. 17120, increase expenditure PO 2017 1031 GB Hawk Construction. 17121, 2018 tax budget. 17122, fiscal year 2016 private rehab 540 Ridge Drive. 17123, amend salaries and benefits code 3105, police, fire chief, civil service classification. 17124, amend ordinance 142.16 and 14316 regarding municipal pool construction. 17125, LPA project agreement with ODOT Guilford Boulevard Bridge. 17126, discussion and review of 2016-17 sidewalk program. And 17127, increased expenditure for your construction PO 2017. 1022. 17119, amending salaries and benefits code section 3114, sick leave. Right. Thank you. Um, this was just, this is a request just to make everybody on the same page. When um, this went into the pay code, it was understood that if, if you earn two sick days, you would, should use them the following six months, but it was never written in there. So this would just be to clarify that people can carry the sick, um, sick days or personal days, we call them, over to the next year. All the contracts have it written now in, in their contracts. They must be used that year. What's this last paragraph that talks about that some people have seven to 10 days on the books and you want them to use them all this year? Right, some people, one person retired and this person argued the fact that um, all these personal days should have carried over, so he was paid out these personal days. And so since that time, everybody's, if they didn't use their personal days, they just accumulated. So some people have six, six or seven days on the books. And I'm just asking here, should they, can they be allowed to use it at least this year, or can we, I don't know what we should do with those people that have so, so many days on the book. What should we do with them? Well, I guess the question, I don't know, one thought would be, let them use the uh, two days per six months, then it would be four days and the rest just get paid out. Because wouldn't you rather have them working than missing work? Well, the preference would be they, they can carry the vacation over. Um, I think, we're, yeah, we were just talking about the stress days. I understand but they can use these instead of vacation, get them off the books by December 31st, and then carry over the vacation days, oh. and then we're not doing that. Because if you think about it from the retirement perspective, <clears throat> the stress days are actually coming out of sick hours. Well, the sick hours, they take your block of time that's left, and then you get a percentage up to a maximum. But if you pay them out straight days, as if they were accumulated days, now you're in, in essence, if they have 10, you're granting them two weeks extra vacation that you're, that you're paying out. That was never the intention when right, they were right. set up in the first place. Right. So that would be my recommendation. So we, we just wanted to have some kind of end point. So rather than say, okay, you gotta use these all in the first six months or in the next six months, we'll give you to the end of the year. And if you have to use a little bit less vacation and carry it over, then, then the will all balance out from then on. So then if you do that for this year, then next year, the first six months they get two days, they have to use it the following six months. Yes, if they sir. don't, they lose it. Right. They can't and, use and, it as And the same thing into the first of next year, whatever they earned <clears throat> for the last six months of 2017, they have to use in the first two months. But they don't always use them because you use them as a vacation day, quote unquote. Exactly. Right. It's, yeah, it's not like there's a hindrance in using right. them. Well, what happens if anybody should continue to have a balance of these stress days? Well, once we pass this, then they won't be permitted to carry the balance over. Okay, so that's so why we're encouraging, the, encouraging them to use it. What if they've already used up all their vacation for this year? Well, they couldn't have done that. Because right now they're getting at the same as sick time, so every pay period they get another increment of vacation. So they could have used some vacation that they got this year, but not what they've got coming yet. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was just going to add, folks that have these Accumulated sick days are the folks that don't take off, so those, they've been earned and they should be entitled to use them on top of that. So. Other thoughts? Okay. I'm okay with 
Okay, okay, so we're going to have a motion to vote on having a requirement to be very clear that there's used two days, six days, uh, or stress days that are accumulated for the previous six months have to be used the next six months, and any stress days that are accumulated now on the books will be used by the end of the year as vacation, I guess, really. I mean, and in lieu of vacation. Right. Okay. Move to approve is recommended. Second. Any further discussion? I mean, as always, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 17-120, increased expenditure PO 2017 1031 GB Hawk. Who's yes. handling this one? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this would be to increase the PO for some change orders for a project at uh, a chip project at 409 East North Street. Uh, the original PO was uh, 28,000. Um, the changes are an additional $2,700, but it's just an increase to the PO of 1250. So it would take up 29.50. Um, this would go to city council for review for uh, approval. There's an emergency clause uh, requested um, since GB Hawk is one of the few companies that bids on our chip programs. Um, we'd like to get them paid out as quickly as possible so that money can go back in to hopefully continue uh, bidding on chip applications as they come through. Questions? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 17121 2018 tax budget. Keith? Uh, you, I just sent this out today, so if you want to wait till next one, but we don't need to pass until the July meeting. Um, it's the tax budget, the information, and it comes from the five year plan. It doesn't actually control our expenditures. There's listed in here um, projected expenditures, but those are just projections for the budget commission. The, the, the actual budget that we're working on is what controls our expenditures. And this sets up our revenues from budget commission. Now, I looked at the inside and outside millages. Let me try to find that email. Changed a little bit. It's not in here. I think it's in our. Uh, the reason is the uh, we've been losing money in the pension fund, so mm -hmm. I cranked up the millage in the pension a little bit. So it's going up to the the inside millage, which is I assume the general fund is going down to two point one. Right. How what impact would that have? On the, on the amount of money in a general fund? Um, one mill is, well, it varies a lot from year to year, but one mill was bringing in about 500,000, so um, 0.2 mills, maybe 100,000. So how are we going to make that 100,000? Because the general fund is the one that's getting hit the most, and we had to allocate funds, if you recall, last year and the year before from other accounts to give more money to the general fund. Well, I did just crank up the income tax estimate, so that'll help. Yeah, everybody saw that. The income tax was up. What did you say it was? Uh, about 12% from last year? Was it month over month, but you really need to look at the year today because the, the month to month fluctuates a lot. Um, but year over year, we're a little over five, so. So we're going to lose about 100000 from the general fund, and I guess the question is we just put 100000 in and we keep it up. Now we're going to lose it. And this could be year to year. We'll see how we do. The, the big thing with the millage is if you go back, and you don't have all this history here, but if you go back three or four years, um, 0.9 mills was enough to cover this. But property taxes have been dropping. The amount we get per mill has been dropping. Now, I expect to see a recovery on that, which will compensate for this change, but we haven't seen it yet. Um, in 16 and 15, I mean, the amount we brought in just kept going down and down. That's why we had to make this change to keep. Well, we can't go like 50,000, half of it, or we'd be in trouble in 18 if we did that? Well, if you look on, we lost about 90,000, I think it was, last year in the in the fund. So, I mean, I'm trying to cover that. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess the question is that you're covering that and a little bit more, but then we're also. I guess assuming it could go either way, whether or not the property taxes go up or down, and I, you know. I mean, we look at it every year when I put this together. So I mean, if if well, I'm just worried about how we're going to fill the general fund void then. Is there any department head out there that like to give up some more money? Because I mean, that, we're looking at a situation where we're going to have to do something because it's going to be a couple of years that it's going to have a, a big impact on the, the general fund accounts. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Take it from Dino. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we have a choice to do this. I mean, you have to fund the pensions. 
Right. Sure. And it's not, there's no, there's no ability, but the question is, by doing this, we're impacting the general fund. Unless, well, there's really nothing else you can take from it. I mean, the inside millage is just a general fund, I think, right? It's not a general fund. That, that's those two, and we get 3.2, so that's why it always adds up to 3.2. Well, we sent for years, we're, especially in the last five or six years, where we've taken a hit from revenue coming in from a lot of it from the state. We're okay. going to have to find other means of. Well, the income tax is higher. I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, it's going to offset this somewhat through the allocation of the increase in the income tax month over month, but it's not, I don't know if it's going to be enough to cover the whole thing. Right. I I don't remember off the top of my head what it was, but I did tell you in that email how much the general fund impact was of the income tax. Four hundred thousand total. And I, I don't know. It was, the whole overall was four or five hundred thousand. So whatever the general fund amount was, I can't remember at the time. They had forty, thirty-five percent. It's twenty-five, but that's after you take 20. out the twenty. It's not not a trick. Okay. I Fine. I mean, I, we really don't have a choice. I mean, we can't say no unless you just don't want to pay attention. Please pay attention. Any other questions? I mean, we could pass it out of finance here, and it'll be on the council next week. Okay, everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. okay. Move to approve. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the, the, the general fund portion, the income tax increase is seventy-eight thousand. I was pulling that up on my phone. Seventy-eight. Right. That's that's the general fund portion, the increase, in, but I mean, all of that is subject to. All of these things are subject to change because, I mean, a big part of the property tax is because the millage is down and then the income tax, it looks good now, so we've gone up, but, you know, two years from now, I can't say that we'll be there. Right. It's always a juggling act to try to make sure that things work out. Uh, 17122 fiscal year 2016, CHIP Private Rehab 540 Ridge Drive. Jonathan? Thank you. Uh, this is a new new uh, chip project uh, here in the city of Medina on Ridge Drive. Um, Thirty-six thousand dollars. The in your packet it shows pretty extensive laundry list of improvements to be made to the property. These are obviously always LMI um, households. Uh, so just ask that this get uh, passed along to finance to city council for approval. We do request the emergency clause. Um, GB, uh, you know the the construction company on this one is GB Hawk as well. Um, you know, they've been on a lot of the projects, so we'd like to have this go through emergency clause so we can pay to the contractor as quickly as possible to have the cash flow to be able to continue um, bidding on chip projects. Jonathan, do we give them a blank check in the beginning? Or we give them the, the, uh, the 36000 in the beginning? Or do they submit they get paid as they do the work and it's inspected and approved by CT consultants and or our building department. Okay, all right, so yeah, no they cash up check. They, they, they front all the money and then they, they, they get like okay. a retainer. They just, they do all the work. So that's okay. why that cash flow is important for these companies that are doing the chip. Okay, thank you. And there's a, a small number that you can bid on so that we're trying to trying to keep them going. Because if it's not for them, then it will stop. Well, why why is that number so small? I mean, this company is out of town. Well, because of those restrictions. Well, there's some restrictions. There's paperwork. You know, there's things they have to document. That in a normal job, they go in, they say, "This is the quote. You agree to it." And they, they do it, and you write them a check. This is a lot more paperwork. As as you can see, just from the application itself, you know, it's it's a, it's a lot of effort and documentation for the government funds. Yeah, what they charge to the change the GFI circuit. Well, that's a, and I think I brought up before. Do yeah, we yeah, ever yeah. check these numbers to say, hey, yeah, that's they get vetted by by okay. CT consultants, which is doing it. They're 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 putting together estimates that are not part of the bid process, and then when the bid comes in, we have to compare that against you know the do we within a do well we CT consultants. Oh, I know, but do on we, our behalf, do yes, we. it gets verified. So if they're if it's not within the within the bound within the bounds of the of the um, I think it's no more than 10 percent over the uh, estimate by CT. Then it can't be. Then it, then it gets thrown out and has to either get rebid or goes to the next person that is within the within the uh, appropriate margin. Do they 
do their bidding on based on prevailing wage and union scale or yeah the what? this the chip dollars come through the state which are from federal HUD dollars and um, it's something that that requires uh, Davis Bacon prevailing wage requirements and that all has to be documented by the by the construction company showing those wage reports it has to be periodically reviewed so as the mayor said you know, you hate to say it, but you know, it's kind of a paperwork um, profit margin has to be on there. Uh, you know, it's not like you're hiring somebody and you give them a thousand dollars and they finish out the project for four thousand, um, and they're they're not having to show you any of this paperwork to verify their their wages. Uh, so it's it is a, it is a lot of work, and it's a lot of work to kind of develop these con these construction companies to understand the process and get used to the process. So uh, once you get somebody that's used to the process and understands it, um, if it was not for these construction companies, these households in our community wouldn't be wouldn't be getting this these these improvements done to their property. I mean it's not only just them, but it's the housing stock that's, you know, goes beyond them into the future. So it just maintains the, the the, uh, the suitability of our housing stock, which is important just long term. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Do you approve with the emergency clause? Second, with the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 17123, amending salaries and benefit code 3105, police chief and fire chief civil service classification. I just submitted this in um, just to have a discussion on what direction we would like to take. Currently, all the department heads in the city except for considering the department the chiefs um, and Mr. Patton are all um, non, on, I mean, non classified individuals, which means they don't have civil service protection and they could be fired uh, kind of like an employee at will by the mayor or whomever the mayor may be. Um, the question is, do we want to think about changing um, any of those positions uh, to a non classified position whereby, you know, the mayor would have the authority whenever to just like he has with all the department heads to make a determination to eliminate that position and put something new in there. What is everybody's thoughts? How, how long has it been like this? The way it's a long time. time. So the 80s, years probably the 80s it came in? Yeah. 90s? No, I think it was even before that. Cause I, I know Chuck Davis was civil service protected. I don't know about his father. I, yeah, Chuck was civil service. I don't think his father was. Okay. Yeah. So the question is, I mean, what are the thoughts? Uh, I guess there's two schools so of thoughts, of course. Seven. I mean, trying to protect that position so that no matter what happens to the mayor's office, that person could stay. Um, or in some communities, I mean, that's very important, especially in Cuyahoga County, I believe. A new mayor comes in, they fire everybody, right. no matter what party or anything. And But in Medina, I don't know. I mean, I just think about it a little bit further. I mean. Is it that important? I don't think we anybody ever really thought about it. So now we're thinking about it. All right. Well, somebody thought about it to make those positions. Yeah. Exactly. They did. So why did they do that back then? <laughs> that was like 40 years ago, though. So maybe we should rethink about it, see if we want to keep it that way or change it. I mean, anybody have any strong feelings? It, it's obviously you know pros and cons to it, but I I still like the idea of somebody that's going to be applying because it's not going to affect the current situation. But somebody that's going to be applying for those uh, two positions in the future, you know. I, I mean, if, if you know, Chief Garducci was an example that he retired from one job, so if he was only here for four years and the mayor that that currently was here did not run for re-election and another one come in and, and said we no longer need you, that might not be, uh, you know, as bad for that that individual but for somebody that's that's younger that wants to make a career and move up in the in the in the, the ranks to become chief police or fire i i still think it you know they do need some protection and well, why don't we have the department protected because if they come to the job they can get fired the next day well that's a good question how do you how do you define i guess what would be important would be to define if there is a difference what is the difference between the, the, the fire chief and the police chief in particular, what's the difference between those two positions and their impact on the department as compared to any other department head 
and the impact on their department. I mean, is there a, can we quantify a difference in, the, in that kind of changeover? I'm not sure. I know that for the most part, at least in the police department, everybody under the chief, including chief civil service protected, right? So right. They're, they're protected. And I guess that's a good question. I mean, if the chief goes away, does that mean the department goes into chaos or is it they still do their job? I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. But I mean, Denny made a good point. You know, if you're looking to hire good people, a lot of people are looking for some, some longevity and security. Right. But we have, you know, we have hired good people in other in positions. Well, I would say I mean, all the people that the department is that, that are think at, you're pretty good. They are at will employees. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I guess I'm trying to think if we're going to make it, if you, if you, you have to find a, a difference. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference between those positions then? Because well, well, these people have come here and they could be, you know, through every administration, they could be removed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But how is the chief, how are the two chiefs different? And, that, and that's a valid question. I mean, I would hate to see in, you know, a, a new mayor come in and, and say that we don't want certain department heads. That, that maybe the question should be, should we be changing those as civil service protection? And I don't know legally if you can. But mayor, I think a question, because I'm not familiar with civil, civil service protection, but if, if you had somebody in that position of fire chief or police chief, uh, and there was insubordination or some some reason, not just because you're a new mayor and you want somebody else in there, you know, I understand that when you say they're protected by civil service, if, if they're doing something wrong, uh, in your eyes, whether you're a current mayor or a new mayor, is it a lot more difficult to terminate somebody or discipline? Maybe not terminate, but discipline somebody that civil service protection versus that will? Yeah, so there's a lot, there's more process. So uh, with the civil service protection, they have a right to appeal the discipline if it's, if it's a suspension of uh, three days or greater or a termination, they have a right to have a hearing at the Civil Service Commission. If they're not satisfied with that hearing, they have a right to appeal that to the Common Pleas Court, and then that starts the whole process, as opposed to an at-will employee. Um, I mean, generally, you, you, you're not required, but you would have some sort of cause of action. You wouldn't just say, well, I don't like the shirt you have on today. Right. You know, things like that. You would hope <laughs> those things don't happen. Um, one of the disadvantages I see of removing it is um, you know, you have folks that have been in the department for um, arguably, you know, 20 years, 22 years, 24 years, and now you have the chance to, to test for chief, but you take that opportunity yes. to test for chief mm -hmm. knowing that someday in the future you may be kicked out of the pension system mm -hmm. with a short amount of time left. That's the fear I see from from a civil service employee perspective, and I can tell you some of them may, may make a decision that I won't take the test on. If, I, if that's gonna be a risk, I, I simply won't take the test. And I hate to see qualified people that otherwise would have the opportunity uh, make the decision simply, simply based on that. I don't know that Mr. Huber's had a chance. I, I asked him uh, when he got an opportunity it's a busy place, but um, there may or may not be some protections within state law without without civil service protection. But I just don't know the answer to that. If, if council thinks that his position shouldn't be protected by civil service, does civil service commission still have to agree with that too? No, I don't think so. I think we make the decision. It's an ordinance. I don't think yeah, I don't think the civil service has can overrule us. You know, but what the mayor says, there's the difference. You, there what, is what he's saying in that department, if you are a sergeant or lieutenant, yeah. you're thinking about you want to move up to chief. Right. There's a difference between most yeah, other departments where you don't have somebody, most people in the other departments aren't looking at becoming a service director, but I think you would think twice if you had 15, 20 years and, and, and you were going to say, well, I could do this for maybe four, but then I'm out. Well, that, well, maybe not, but that begs the question because there's only one other department head that's civil service protected. Well, that's the question I have. Is why is that department head 
Just protect it in the rest or not. They, what, they just, how did that ever come about? Somebody just came around. <laughs> that's just smiling. <laughs> I'm just trouble. curious. I, do we know how that came about? Well, that's that's relatively new because when I was Jim married, Roberts it was not. Right. I think Jim Roberts did yeah. a little bit. Just to protect. Because he had somebody he wanted to protect, or do we know? He came up. When you started, Roberts was there. Right. I, I can't. I can't oh. answer why Roberts did it. Uh, for for a lot of things, but uh, for this one in particular, <laughs> did we have an, engi an engineer prior to? It was uh, we had was um, we had it was Cunningham, but he wasn't. We had a contract. We had a contract service for most of our engineers. Well, uh, but but then we had Joe Walker in between, too. So Joe Walker was hired as an engineer, and then promoted to service yeah. director. Yeah, not, I'm saying when I was here, it was a contract right. service. It was, it was yeah through Cunningham. It was still a contract right. service with Cunningham. Well, I guess other communities do it differently. I don't know how many communities have civil service protected uh, chiefs or not. I mean, it is a concern that they may think that, but all, all the, um, other communities do it. They don't seem to have issues with it. I don't know. I don't believe, but I guess that's a good question. I mean, I don't know the answer. And you know, we could we don't have to come up with an answer today, but I mean, it's something we have to think about because it'll have an impact no matter what decision we make going forward. And we'll be in the same position. Maybe we want to. You know, civil service protection. I don't think we can modify those rules of how you can fire somebody for a reason you want to fire them for without going through the whole process. I can check with other. Which so could be I expensive Wadsworth, for the city. Wadsworth and Brunswick in the county both have civil service protection. I so the question is, it just costs you more money if you want to get rid of somebody. No, you go no, the, the, the other thing is kind of a middle of the road is what they do in um, Cleveland, for example. So if you're promoted from a commander position or a captain or a major or whatever, and then the mayor decides somewhere along the line that he'd, he'd rather that person not continue, they have the opportunity to go back to the rank they were at. Um, so, so then rather than civil service protection, it's kind of like an in-between of no protection versus civil service protection. So it still gives some flexibility to the administration and the person isn't, isn't kicked out of the pension system. You know, let's go ahead. That's probably a lot easier to do in some places like Cleveland, but when you're talking a department of 42 or whatever it is, you know, how do you put that person back in? What if you don't have a position? <clears throat> well, there, you know, um, when you have a reduction in force, there's rules. So if we went from, uh, if, if the person that was promoted uh, went back to lieutenant and we only have one lieutenant slot, then the person that was least senior would then go back to sergeant, the person that was least sergeant, well, they can, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a ripple effect. You don't want to be and, and you're right. In, in a larger community, you can absorb right. things like that a little easier than you can in a department I'm, of our size. I'm, I'm just stating an alternative. You, you make a compelling case to, to keep the uh, civil service there, but uh, one thing you mentioned that a guy might not want to take the risk. Wouldn't we want a leader in that position who's not afraid to take some risk? Well, it's it's... With all due respect, it's one risk to um, accept a position and, and know there's going to be some danger and uncertainty and things like that. I mean, that's just the nature of police work. It's another risk to put your family and your children in college and, and everything else at risk because you come in one day and, and all of a sudden you're unemployed. Um, that, no that's the, own. that's and, the difference and, and I, I see. I understand. Right. I mean, I've been in the private sector. All my life, I've right. never had union protection. Understood. Okay, yes, so you, 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 know, people, you take those those kind of exactly. risks, and you have confidence in yourself. Right. That's right. The way I look at it. But I, 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 not to interrupt you, but I, in the private sector, there isn't uh, as much of a chance of turnover in the CEO position. That the, where the CEO can come in and just say, hey, Paul, yeah. thank you, I want somebody else to take your yeah. position. Well, that could be, that's what I was going to bring it. It's kind of like a corporation. You you as a CEO, if you don't perform, you're out. Yeah. Right. There's no protection for you. Right. right. And I guess that's kind of what I was looking at is that, the, that that's a model that I like. I mean, you have to perform in your job. If you don't, I think the boss should be able to get rid of you. And if you get a new board of directors. Director, you could be the greatest performer that you could yeah. possibly be, and a new mayor could come in and say, I've got so-and-so that I think would be better at that position. I agree. You know, but I don't know, the only thing I disagree with is, we've all lived here a long time, and, and not to say that it won't change, but that's never been Medina. 
the mayors don't come in and fire everybody. It's, it, we just don't do that. And it could change. Who knows what the future holds? Mm -hmm. But if you're good, usually it doesn't matter what mayor you stay. I mean, it's always been there, as far as I can remember. But John, I could make the argument too that this has worked for 40 years too and not been a problem before. Sure. You sure it hasn't been a problem? <laughs> I don't think it has for a. <laughs> 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 I, I, mean, I, I, I don't know, I just like the more flexibility. It seems to me, if you really want to have the flexibility to accomplish the goals you want to accomplish, you, that's what you need. But that's just, that's just what I mean. I mean I, it seems like the flexibility brings with it the ability to move forward. And, and I guess I look at it as the mayor is elected by the people. If the mayor comes out with a platform that everybody says, I want to go in this direction, and all his department heads that are civil service protectors say, well, I want to keep it in this direction, and they're not doing anything wrong, how you get rid of them and you can't never take the direction you want to go and if people voted the mayor in to say we want to go this way and that's the only case where i think that it would be hampered where a department head would say well you, i really don't want to go that way i'm going to keep doing this and do it in such a way where it doesn't uh cause a problem as far as with the mayor to be rid up written up and stuff but it well, still causes a problem where the you, person you're talking ahead. about it though you're talking about it being an issue of policy not a behavioral issue this is like, I, I, I am, I'm, but I'm generally what you're saying is this isn't because of, of some misbehavior or some violation. This is because there is an agenda that I'd like to pursue, but I have a, administrators who don't want to do it, but I, but they are protected by civil right. service. So the outcome of that is I'm not going to pursue those policies. That That's what you'd be locked into. That's correct. Right. I mean, that's the misbehavior part of it, I guess, is okay. you're not being followed. Could you use it as insubordination if they're if exactly. you have a, I don't know. A mayor I don't know. Well, I guess you could, but you get to go to the process. Yeah, yeah, this is the area that yeah within work. reason. I mean, the, the mayor, as, as being safety director with the two chiefs position, also has a right to, to um, overrule. Well, to say this is the course oh, that, that we want to take. And um, I mean, I mean, there may be some resistance, there may be some discussions or whatever, but it, it, at the end, it's up to the safety director to decide. And if, if they are insubordinate, uh, Denny's exactly right, if they are insubordinate, then those are things that mm -hmm. are currently under the civil service that we can deal with. Well, and I think we've also been fortunate in the last six years, anyhow, or almost six years. Is this year's second term? Yes, sir. And you're halfway through. Almost eight. Almost eight. Almost eight. Almost eight. Almost eight. <laughs> okay, almost eight. Time, time flies. That we've got a safety director <laughs> that was his entire career that was involved in the safety forces. Yes, sir. Previous mayors, that was not the case. Uh, so I mean, if I if I was going to be looking at changing anything, not now, and hopefully not for the next four years, but I think future councils should should look at requirements for a safety director, and if that that person, after a dentist decides not to seek office anymore, uh, does not have a safety background. Uh, you know that that, that might be, need to be a, another position. I know that we don't want to talk about adding people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's not but do that. Now. In reality, we're real fortunate now. Well, we are because previously everybody always relied on the police chief, the and police the chief, and the fire chief because they were the people that knew best what to do and really were the formulators of policy right. more than mm -hmm. the mayor was I mean right and they were you know that and that was important to be able to rely on them right well I guess my whole point is think about it and then you know we could revisit it next time but I don't know it, it, we got three people that are civil service protected is that okay should we make all the people civil service protected or should we make none of them civil I mean that's the question I love the things that we just are going to think about. What do you want to do? I mean, I don't, I don't know if everybody's There's ready no to... There's no pressure then. I'm mean, just going to go home and think about it. I love that. Uh, how many are we going to do? I don't have much to do, so is, I can think about it. I, 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 myself, I mean, I like what the mayor talked about, Kyle and County, that those employees, if they become unprotected, still have that option to step down in that position there. But yeah, but how would you like to be that new guy that was was hired because they promoted everybody but that happened. No, and no, he that gets put back in the rank and then you lose your job because there's well, no position for you well they don't lose their job they, they go back to being right. an officer down you mean the guy at the end yeah the guy yeah. at the very end that got hired oh, to replace like, all that 
Yeah. What do you do with that guy? Well, no, somebody's going to get promoted to chief. So I mean, you're, you're still going to end up if you if you have Same 32 position. people, you're going to still end up uh, 32. Unless you're you bringing your own person. It's just they're switching seats. Unless you come in from outside. Right. 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 It's like playing musical chairs, you know, when you start with yourself. I don't chair. see that like you No, 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 I'm just saying, that's, yeah, I have to. Or, two you know, just throw it out there. If, if it isn't unprotected and there's a change of hands, council has a say in that. We already do, we already do approve we do. of the department. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but in the release. In the, for the police and fire. Yes, Chief. Point, I'm one of the guys that came from outside, and I didn't have the age for retirement. Had I not have civil service and tested through the procedure, um, I wouldn't be here today. If there wasn't the protection, and I know talking to my candidates, the next four guys below me now. If I leave, if there's not there, they're not going to take it. So you'll probably be forced to go outside or hire a young guy. But without that, there, you're, like the mayor said, you're going to have to have someone that's already retired. So you're going to get a guy that's probably well over 55. To even think about it and. But is that unique to, to your department? Because I, I can't imagine the other department heads, they would say, I don't want to be the, you know, service director, I don't want to be the, the parks director, the rec director, because I might get fired. Well, fire's always been a paramilitary organization. You always start, to you got to test to get into the job, and you test your whole career through. And it's just the way it's always been. I know Cleveland Fire, their chief is civil service protected, it's tested. So, it's even in a big city, you now you can shuffle people around, but... Um, well, I understand that. I guess I kind of like the, the middle ground, personally. I mean, even though I like the other way, but the middle ground sounds better to me. I mean, I just you like, like them both. I like the more flexibility. That's all. I'm, I'm for flexibility. That's all. But again, nobody, think about it. Think about what Pat, Pat's the only one that's civil service protected to make all the other ones. Yeah, I guess if Pat that. went down, I don't know where you'd go. Huh? If we, did we, did, we, did, we didn't Pat. talk about the engineer. Yeah, what about Pat's position? Yeah. I don't know how that became so much. Well, it had to be Jim. Well, it had to be in the early 90s, I'm thinking. Was it, was it just, just for, just for in, you know, the information, was it when you came in? Were Correct. you in civil service when you came in? Yes. Uh, uh, Jill Walker was the first full-time engineer. And I think he was only here <coughs> less than a year before he was promoted to service director, and that's when I was hired. But the position when it was created uh, was civil service protected. Okay, so he was civil service protected right. as well. Okay, so the, the full time position was created that way. Correct. In at the beginning, 1990. But why would that be with not all the other ones? It's weird. Why is the engineering so much? We can do what you want. So much more important. Yeah. Well, the charter organization. Right? Yeah. Well, I think the difference was that was a new position. And they had they decided at that time should or shouldn't it be yep. whereas all of the others had had been one way or the yeah, other for a long time. So, you don't remember, Mr. Huber, do you? What's that? Um, if if there was some specific argument as to why the engineers should be different than the the other department heads back in the early nineties. Now uh, I think it was just we have had a strong civil service commission for a long time and. It seemed in the scope of normal normalcy to make that position civil service. That's yeah, no, I think it's a bit projects that are pending. I don't think it got a great deal of thought one way or the other, other than that was the normal protocol. You know, I think originally, if my memory is correct, Greg might remember better than I, but I'm pretty sure that originally, um, Patrick, the engineer, was reporting to Joe. And then at some point, Mayor Roberts wanted you to report directly to him and, and made it a department head as well. That's, I, yeah, I think that's correct. Okay. Mm. So it wasn't a department head to begin with, correct. technically. Correct. It became one. That explained it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions on that? If I had to vote now, I would vote for keeping it the same and just further discussing at a later date the. Uh, other departments. Oh, all the other departments, you mean? Yeah. Everybody feel the same on that? No. I, I would agree with any. The other departments? Or, no, I'm sorry. I said the discussion at a later time. time. Just, just oh, discussing those departments. later. You're still thinking? Oh, okay. okay. But keeping uh, it as is. I'm okay with keeping it, keeping it the way it is right now, and with looking at the possibility of making it flexible down the road if we do bring somebody 
or we do take the civil service away, give them the opportunity to go back. I'd like to discuss that a little okay. further. Right, but that only happens, it only could happen not with the current people in place, when the new person comes right. in. Right. All right, it sounds like there's four that want to keep it the same and three that don't or want to modify it somewhat. What? Think about it. We're always thinking. Two. Just, yeah, don't just forget we're going to think about it. Okay. Start <laughs> All, right, yeah. All right, well, think about it. Uh, let's move on. Uh, 17124, amending ordinance 14216 and 14316 regarding memorial pool construction. Patrick. Thank you. Uh, back last fall, council approved two ordinances for our pool project, one for the pool uh, contractor, one for the pool house contractor. It's a little unusual in that uh, council wanted to have direct input on the bids. Uh, but I think you remember we came back and asked for a little bit more money just to, for, to cover potential change orders. We're here today since the project could finalize to make it clear we don't need any more money. In fact, we're going to be about a couple thousand dollars less, but we oh. do need to uh, kind of switch where uh, increase one of the POs, one of the ordinances, and decrease the other one. Uh, specifically, ordinance 142.16 for the pool house renovation, increase that by $9,482.50. And uh, ordinance 143.16 for the pool decreased that by $11,862. Well, no, no relationship, but the million dollar question. What is the total cost of the pool, including transfers from the parks department and everything? What is Coincidentally, the door? Is, uh, Jason and I over the last couple of days have put together a spreadsheet. Oh, we don't need to see the papers, just tell us what the number is. No, do, do we want to see those papers? Yeah. <laughs> no? If you, if you include uh, the expense of the donation from Murray and Sue Van Epp and the <coughs> parking lot resurfacing <coughs> that we uh, reprioritized uh, to go hand in hand with the project, it's about $951,953.54. Okay. So it's not the million dollar question, it's only the $950,000 question. And the donation for the uh, donation from Murray and Sue Van Epp uh, was $6,396, which puts it at about $945,500. And if you deduct what the potential donation for Kiwanis is, it's about $925. So well, there are a lot of unforeseen expenses when we went into this. If you're familiar with what the concession stand had to be completely rebuilt um, and a number of other things that came up. The and I do recall when the discussions first started, we had a number between two and three million dollars. So for us to. And Jansen, wait, how much was the parking lot? The parking lot to choose for the dog park, the uh, <laughs> yes. baseball, baseball fields across the street, the frisbee golf, jump park. Uh, that was thirty-nine thousand eight hundred and thirty-eight dollars, and that money was originally going to go to Reagan Park. Uh, the quote was more than we anticipated, so we shifted uh, to kind of piggyback this project and check that off, off our list. So that puts the total, with the donations that they exclude the parking lot, it's about 886000 And we started out at an 800000 number, is so. that? The 2.3 was a Kalahari water park, but yeah, we were. Well, back in 2012, we weren't doing a Kalahari. John Coyne mentioned it being a million dollars for the renovation and 2.3 for a new pool. So. I was close. We gave it under that. He did. No, that, that's fine. I, I, Two I, point. Well known. <laughs> and, and it seems like <laughs> there's a lot of uh, activity with the pool so far, as long as we continue to have good weather or warmer weather. Yeah, we're at about $37,000 in revenue So we're projected about, what was it, 60 or 80? So we're halfway there? We need to make at least. 50,000. 50? Break even with the 25,000 budget. It's we still have to lie in August. But I think the season passes too, you're talking about. Yeah. Summer. Summer. Yeah. All right. Let's start money for Christmas lights. Maybe. Does anybody have any more questions? <laughs> Your motion? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. All in favor of the emergency clause? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. <laughs> Keep it form. 17125 LPA project agreement with ODOT, Guilford uh, uh, Boulevard Bridge. Patrick? Thank you. Um, anytime we uh, do projects with ODOT where we are going to be uh, sell a project and manage it, we have to enter into an LPA agreement with them. 
uh, which gives us the authority to bid the project, to manage the project. Uh, we've done this before, like West Smith that we're doing now is an LPA project. Huntington Street a couple years ago with Huntington Press. We've done this several times, but this is just council approving the agreement between the city and ODOT for this process. Question? Pat, uh, I see you at in here that we don't need to allocate the money right at this point. Is that correct? correct? Yeah, this this is not permission to bid. This is just entering into the agreement with ODOT where ODOT will allow us to bid the project, manage the project. Okay. I guess, well, why wouldn't we commit that money? That well, we could, but you typically, we're going to have to come back to you with for authorization to come bid. Back. Okay. That's when we usually do that. Okay. And <clears throat> I know you and I talk, but now the project is not until next year, is that correct? That's what it, it's looking like. This, pro, this agreement we just got last week, uh, and they have not yet approved our environmental, so it's looking good. It's 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 push. Mm -hmm. And then the improvements, that, the temporary improvements that we did over there to, to uh, shore up that sidewalk, that's good for another year, safety-wise. Yeah. You mm -hmm. guys are comfortable with that? And is there any way you can make maybe an announcement of council or some some way to get out to the public so sure. residents in the heritage neighborhood know that don't worry about this summer, next summer is when it's going to yeah. be tight? And there's no way, Pat, they can get that environmental done and still get it done this summer? I don't think so. It's the ODAP process, unfortunately. Okay. All right, any other questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Mr. Perry. 17-126 discuss the 16-17 sidewalk program. Thank you. Um, I think tonight there's a uh, ordinance on the uh, agenda for council to authorize the concrete pavement general services uh, bid. And that's the bid we use um, we used last year for the sidewalk program. So we don't really need authorization to bid for this program, but we thought we'd just give you a little update as to what we did last year and what we're anticipating this year. Uh, last year we replaced a little over 9,000 square feet of sidewalk, 171 different properties. Total project cost was a little over $59,000, of which almost 42,000 of it was billed to property owners. And through last week, uh, about $36,000 had been uh, paid from property owners. There's less than $6,000 that's still out there, which potentially could be uh, assessed for people's taxes. And if I remember right, Keith, I think there's two more billings. People have two more months to pay before. Right. Okay. So that number could drop even more. Uh, this year, I included a map of uh, the proposed area. It is a little bigger than last year. A couple of reasons. We kind of had a learning curve where we're a little more comfortable. Plus, a good part of that area was included within the Columbia Gas um, project, and a lot of that sidewalk was replaced already. Um, we're anticipating, we've already been out there and did preliminary identification, a little over 9,400 square feet, 201 properties, and uh, $68,500 estimate. Mark? Pat, with all due respect, I, I like that we're expanding the uh, the footprint, if you will, but man, Ward 3 is getting shortchanged here on it. And I was wondering, uh, I know there's some, I appreciate you putting Grant Street on there because that is a tough spot. Um, but uh, sections of just right off the, the main or main center of town on Wadsworth Road and South Broadway, I mean, there's some sections there that uh, would be great to be with encompassed into the 2017. Uh, I mean, it looks like Ward 2 is doing pretty healthy out there. And, I don't know if uh, is that I guess even you possible know, to be manageable or to change it up a little bit. I guess our thought was to start you know, as we did with the downtown area and then kind of rotate out. Um, there are some old neighborhoods over on the south side there. That yeah, we could keep going, but at some point you got to No, I understand that. Stop. I, and then how did you decipher this block that you have? I thought we'd start up top and circle around as we go on for the coming years so so will that will that drop down the, will the northern street where you've got um hardy will you will go down toward jackson and into your plan 
It's, it's everything in that block. You're yeah, doing yeah. everything in everything that, in that block. block. Yeah. Well, everything that needs it. Right. So that's a. I I think you know. It's a I think area. if there's a specific sidewalk, we can always just notify you that there is a specific. If I find one four four foot block of sidewalk that is is uh, out of compliance, we can address that. But I think the way the program, when we put it together, is it, there has to be. Um, it has to be doable with all the process of the notification of people and the identification of the sidewalks, the inspection, because the sidewalks have to be inspected when they, you know, when they go in. So I think it's been a, the, I thought last year was a great start. And I think if you look at the, that's a lot of sidewalks in, in, in this year. That seemed, if that's doable, you know, for the administration to, to do all the, all the paperwork and all the, the inspecting that has to be done, that's a pretty, pretty big step. But to address, any specific concern, I think then beyond this, we ought to go back and just specifically point out, you know, a, a sidewalk that's not in compliance, and we want to address that, right? Correct, yeah. So if there's a sidewalk that's a tripping hazard, which is two inches or more, right, then we'll take care of that at any time. And the, and the sidewalks have been marked in green? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and these were already inspected and marked, right? Right. These are already been inspected. Um, these are, you know, what our program will be going forward unless we wanted to add to it. So I think so back to your point, Mark, then for us to come down and award I three, see. we'd have to take some of those off. And that's kind of wasted time of the of the intern that we used to mark these and then adjust it now. Now, I, I can tell you as you get further north there and, and then in the Beachwood area, those are newer areas. So if the preference is to start moving clockwise, clockwise. around the city. Or counterclockwise. You, you, and, you and Mark arm wrestle over there. I'll do it. Oh, counter. Oh. It's you and I on Bocha. Oh. I, I do have one question. Well, you got to look at the older neighborhoods, and there are some really old neighborhoods on that southeast section of town that uh, needs addressed. Right. Well, as well as the areas that we're in. Yeah. I mean, these are pretty old neighborhoods. Oh, too. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. I mean, when I look at these streets, they, they are the older streets. and. Mm -hmm. There also were a lot of sidewalks are right up there along the street and right. that are pretty angled. It, it yeah. seems like a lot of the comp, you know, it's, a lot was accomplished last year. Though, if you consider that there, we had no, if we had no sidewalk program mm -hmm. up until a few years ago, so there was so many years went by when there was absolutely no improvement. Right. This is a. So I don't know if you look up. at this portion of the older central city. That's a. That's in two years. That's a lot of. Um, that's a lot of corrective um, measures to the sidewalk so that we can improve the walkability. I mean, I think that's. A and I would hope in the next four years, you know, if you take those same blocks and start working your way around, in the next four to five years, we are hoping to get to a point where then we can look at the whole city every year. Yeah. And right. then you know right. every, everything across the city because now we've got ourselves out in the areas where the sidewalks are only 10, 15, 20 years old as opposed to 50, 60, 70 years old. That's the ultimate goal. Patrick, um, the, the sidewalks that were marked, there's somebody actually did put some physical marks on the sidewalk? Correct. Okay, so, all right, because I've seen an awful lot of those. I just want to make sure that maybe somebody else isn't doing something. That's one of my questions. Are they marked in green or are they marked in white? white. white. Oh, it is white, okay. Uh, we had both, actually. I've only seen the white. Okay. I just wanted because I saw a bunch of stuff marked in white. Yeah. Okay. Well, That's I'll all ask I you saw. a question later because I get a phone call on green. So, um, do you know offhand how many feet of sidewalk we had done by the gas company? Because it seemed like we had a lot of sidewalks replaced with. Don't know offhand, but I can find that out. Okay, it was a lot. We do. It was quite a yeah. 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 I mean, you can see them when you walk around. You can tell what they are, but it seemed like we, we sort of lucked out. Yeah. Uh, a lot of discomfort with the the project of the, you know the tearing up of the of yards, but in the end we got a lot of free sidewalks. Yeah. Well, and I was just thinking about that too, Mark. We we both you and I both have benefited from Guilford West Park. We had a lot of major improvements in our wards that one and two did not have. And yeah, I thought we put sidewalk all the way out uh, out Route 18 West. Yeah, but, but but I look at, I mean, honestly, the next area I would go next year, though, is like the Bronson Friendship Boulevard, Vine Street. I think those are probably more in need than what's already marked three and four. Um, For next year? Yeah. Yes. 
Say that again. Then? I I would like to, if you look over on the. So uh, so Ward Three is going to miss out two years from now. Or is that what you're saying? I just think we need to keep focusing on these older neighborhoods. Well, yeah. Have you been down South Broadway? Yes. And uh, there's but a lot of old homes of South Court Street. Got a lot of old homes. And I, you know, Bill's right that you know some of the uh, gas company did improve some of those sidewalks. But I mean, some, even East Smith Road. I mean, hopefully that green line is well on your side of the street. But uh, on East Smith, is that both sides of the road or is that the north side of the road? No, that is both sides. Uh, yeah, I guess we get a little bit. Remember our Southern Broadway, we talked that it's going to be one of our, our grant project recommendations. Right. I, I just think it's a, I just think it's beyond, it's more than I, ex when I saw the map initially, it, it was more than I expected. And really the initial accomplishment in 2016 was more than I expected. So I think we're, you know, I think it's a good plan. And it's a doable plan. It makes sense. Okay. Any other discussion? I have a question for Pat. Pat, the, the sidewalks that we approved for Foundry Street, mm -hmm. that's in addition to this, right? That's not being lumped Correct. in this? Yeah, that'll be a separate project. Okay, we're still shooting for this year on that? Pardon me? We're still shooting for this year on that? Yeah, we were. We were kind of we're kicking around, trying to do it under that grant program, but we decided to do the Lafayette, I think, to uh, install sidewalks on Lafayette from Huntington to Oak. So the Bronson ones will be just out of the 108 as you discussed last year. But, yeah. but still this year, right? Yes. Okay. That's Brian's question. Mm -hmm. right. Move to approve. Second. No. There's no, no. no. So there's no improvement to FYI. pick the sides? It's just, a, just, it's just FYI. Oh, this is just an FYI? I think we're voting on whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, that's not going to be true. I want to see the, the yard wrestle first. 17127, increase expenditure year construction PO 2017 1022. Jonathan. Yep. This is to increase the uh, PO on an existing project. Um, find it here. Uh, this is for finance only. Uh, it's an increase of 1425 uh, for for some change orders to the uh, or, uh, the originally approved plan. And once they got in it, there needs to be some other changes made to it. Um, the total amount is uh, 18625, so it's just at finance. So that's for Approval of it, thank you. Questions? I don't know. I don't have time right there. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, was that with the emergency? Yeah. No, it's just fine. Right. Moved to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, two discussion items. First one, we have Ben Rich here from First Energy Solutions to talk about an electric aggregation program. If you recall, eight years ago, almost seven years ago, We've entered into a nine-year agreement, I believe, with uh, First Energy or First Energy Solutions or some entity. It is First Energy. First Energy Solutions. Was it still them? Uh, to uh, have an electric irrigation program in the city of Medina that you can opt out in. And our agreement is up next year. So we're new discussions are afoot. So Ben? Yeah, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, when I met last week with the mayor and Nino, I uh, appreciate you guys putting me on the agenda tonight. I told him at that meeting I, I had moved, moved from the city of Medina about three weeks ago and I had a heavy heart coming back here, but after hearing that Patrick's coming for the sidewalks, <laughs> I've got <laughs> several that are uh, out of compliance, so I'll stop by and let the new owners know that you're <laughs> heading that way. Um, like you said, you guys entered into the contract in 2010. Um, at that time, power prices were about $50 on the market. The reason I called uh, and, and talked to, to the mayor and to Nino was we are at historic lows for power prices. Uh, we are going out and hitting our communities now and giving them the option to renew their contract now. Uh, it does come with a Powering Our Communities grant, but we, uh, commodities across the board, natural gas prices, even, even fuel prices have been uh, at a low point. Um, just by way of example, uh, I use NOPEC. Uh, they just signed a variable price contract at 5.447. What we, uh, what I was able to put in front of the mayor and Nina was a 4.79 price, and that includes a grant for the city of Medina. Uh, How much? Grant? Sorry to interrupt. It, you. No, not, not. Please interrupt at any time if you guys have questions too. Um, it's $134,000, and that's for. 
the four-year contract, a 36-month contract would have a $100,000 grant. It would be stepped off, basically, by the number of years. Um, Solutions at this point is willing to go up to four years on the contract, so 48 months. Um, it's a great price. If it, just doing some math in my head, the, the number I quoted for the NOPEC price uh, versus the number I quoted, it's about $7.50 a megawatt hour. Typical residential customer uses 10 megawatt hours a year. That's $75 savings off of that discount program. So if I could do the math off of what the Ohio Edison price is, it's much larger. So 7,000 households in the community, you're talking well over half a million dollars in savings annually uh, over, the, over the local competitor uh, NOPAC price. And these prices here do not include any transmission charges, line charges, or anything like that? Those this charges is, would be over and above? This is an all-in uh, generation and transmission prices. This does not include Ohio Edison's distribution charges, which is a separate uh, line item on a bill. Which is where I think that's what we got caught with the last time. We took the, the lower rate here with the aggregation and then they upped the transmission charges and we got bombarded with what happened. Uh, the price that you were on right now is a 6% off the PTC. So what that is, uh, the price to compare the PTC is the price that a customer would pay if they did not shop their electric bill. So if they stayed with the utility, Ohio Edison, that's the price they would pay. Medina's program was a percent off of that. It's a guaranteed saving, so it followed that price up and down. It just offered protection that you were never worse than the utility. Uh, unfortunately, nobody offers that anymore because there's no budget certainty to the, to the supplier. So now what we're offering is a fixed price contract, so it'll remain level through that. Some communities have had some issue with that because they liked the idea of the percent off because it gave you a guaranteed <coughs> savings. So what we've done is said, well, we're not going to give you the 6% off PTC anymore as the standard program, but we will offer a small percentage. It's usually like a 1% off opt-in. So for some reason, if, if power prices ever got below that low fixed price, people could opt into the percent off program um, as an alternative. So it offers protection as well. Okay, what, if, what happens if the price is for power gets so high that you can't sustain, you can't purchase the power at these prices? It's a contract. We've, we've seen it happen in, in other um, communities, M more so in Illinois where the price is more volatile, uh, and we've honored that contract just like you would any other. Okay, but at some point in time, you, you're, getting, you're getting $1,000, but you're paying $2,000 for the, for the product. How, how, how long can you sustain that before you have to go out of business? So the commodity once it's contracted is, is they purchase forwards for it so the the market it's, it's almost neutral to the market because now we've purchased forwards for that commodity at that point in time that the contract is signed so for that particular contract we have that covered okay and so your suppliers are guaranteed to regardless of what it costs them to produce the power they're going to continue to produce yeah, it yeah we're contractually price. obligated to, to hold that price. okay and then they file bankruptcy where goes the contract the bankruptcy that First Energy Solutions has, uh, there's rumors about, would be for the generation portion. We are the retail portion of that. Okay, so they go bankrupt then. Right? If those contracts are assigned to a new supplier, then uh, just like any other contract that's assigned, the new supplier would have to take on the uh, contract terms. I have a question for you. When you mentioned previously about the 1% the, the that a resident could opt in if the prices exceeded or <laughs> decreased sure. that level. Are are you saying that the that would be a, a in the previous grant that we got, the residents had an opportunity to opt out Correct. of the program. Is that what you're talking about now? If they opt out of the program now that they still have the ability at some point in time if the price goes up or down that they can opt in then for that sure. one percent. Yep. Okay. Yep. So right now, if if we as an administration and council accepted your proposal, our residents are going to be provided what you you are presenting unless they opt out individually. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. I totally understand. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just small. Any other just, yeah. questions? So just so I'm clear about the other contract 
the old contract is in place until 2018. That's right. And we sign this now, but the four years doesn't start until the end of the old contract. Yeah, meter reads of December 2018. So we're really getting the remainder of the 18 months and then four years of the new locked in. But the remainder of this contract would be served at the 6% off PTC. Yeah. The new yeah, the lower fixed price right, would right. kick in then, yeah. Understood. Right. And there's no way for us to get on the lower earlier and do a longer period. Yeah, that's something I can ask. Okay. Just a question. You know, I, I just want to add from an administrative perspective, uh, Dawn was here for most of this contract. Her and I would handle the um, questions and complaints that we would have when there were concerns with respect to the uh, customers. Some of the elderly folks get confused. There's there's phone calls that come. You may have me here. I'll not that you're elderly. All, all the citizens get them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and, and, I, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the um, the I don't want to say the switching, the slamming that goes on. And this helps. We talked a little bit about the termination fee with respect to the um, twenty-five dollar fee that's current. Yeah, we always recommend a termination fee. Uh, under your current contract, it's twenty-five dollars for a residential customer and fifty for a commercial. We've had communities say, we just don't like the term fee, and we waive that. We'll make it zero and zero. That's fine. Um, one of the things that we talked about is maybe even making it just $5, just something little, because what happens is we're getting these uh, predatory phone calls where they'll say, uh, you know, is this Mr. Coin? And, and you'll say, yes, this is. And then they'll record that yes, and they'll say, we've got a great offer for you. We'd like to offer you $0.07 cents a kilowatt hour you accept and then they'll double your yes in there so they now have consent and they're switching you if we don't have a termination fee you go to that new supplier and you don't even notice until you get your first bill maybe and you've got sticker shock um, what that five dollars cancellation fee does is our department then would kick out a letter to you saying you you're leaving first energy solutions if this is not what you want to do please call us at our 800 number and then the person calls up if a person calls in and says, yeah, this is what I wanted to do, we waive any cancellation fee. We're not going to keep anyone that doesn't want to be with us, but the cancellation fee being there allows us to make sure that it's exactly what people want to do. Um, and we don't have to set it high. 25 and 50 is what it was. Uh, we, you know, we'll, we'll do a $5 cancellation fee like we discussed last week. Or if you're, you have no comfort level with that, we can make it zero. People can come and go as, as, uh, as they want. Thank you. Questions on this side? I have to abstain, of course, because our firm represents First Energy. And I can talk, but I can't talk. <laughs> okay. Um, so but there's more to think about, I guess. Yeah, and one thing also is gas Bill? aggregation, which we've been very reluctant to do mm -hmm. gas because it's so volatile. Each time, each time they ask us, I mean, I'll review it again. And so far, the recommendation has been right. not to do it. Well, we did a request for council action, what, two years ago, and withdrew it because of that. Yeah. But so we're, just, right, we're next to the largest natural gas reservoir. Oh, just, you know, I'm just throwing it out there that there might be a combination aggregation program that, you know, before we... I don't know about decide. gas. No. Gas is abundant right around the corner from us. <laughs> it's all being shipped in China. Yeah. Well, we'll get it back from China. That's <laughs> <Yes, laughs> No, thank, thank you very much. Coming through those pipelines. Thank yeah, well, thanks. Thanks. So, the uh, decision will have to be made. I don't know when. When do you have to know? It's that's up to you guys. You have until December of 2018. The reason that I asked for the meeting was that we we haven't seen prices this low in a while. So what I did was worked up a price for City of Medina and uh, put a 30-day hold on it. So we have until about, about mid-July on that. Yeah, because I think our last meeting is two weeks from now, and then we're off to end of August. What what percentage of this is renewable energy? Well, just the state mandated, but we can, uh, which is I think seven between seven and eight percent, something like that. We, uh, depending on the community's desires, we can do up to hundred percent on that. And and actually, uh, green e wind is is very inexpensive uh, for us to purchase now. So we can we can do up to hundred percent for. Not a lot of money. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks for uh, the information and mm -hmm. make a decision. Probably here. should know by our next meeting. Then. Yeah. If you want to move on that. Yeah. I mean, the contract's not. It could be what one year, two year, three year, four year, whatever. whatever well, he's just saying that he's putting the hold on this low price right. for thirty days. 
So does that mean the price? We, 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 we could wait, but the price could change. Yeah, the price could change if we yes. wait till the end of the year or wait till could go down, could go up. Since, since we're going on our break here soon, could you make it till August? <laughs> Lock this price in till August? <laughs> we can't. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, it, it, it'll be slightly different because there'll be a whole adder put into it, but it's not enough that's going to make any great changes. You know how cheap we are. I guess it could. <laughs> I can I can send uh, Nino the figures tomorrow. What a whole to log is going to look like. All right, thank you. Sure. Appreciate that. Sure. Thanks, man. And I'll throw a green in there also. <laughs> oh, what? Green, green. for Mark. Okay. Hundred percent right, green. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> for Mark. The Mark price. Thank you. <laughs> it's all fun and games. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. Uh, the last item we have is this a discussion on the five-year capital projects that. Everybody should receive the copy of our 2009-2012 capital improvement summary budget. That uh, there were 22 things on the list, and I think we've accomplished more than half of them. Um, the outstanding items, which was number one, was Muni Court. That's still number one, it looks like. Nothing's happened. Smith Road, Champion Creek Development District, something happened. GIS, I don't believe that happened. Bowman Lane, I believe that's still open. No, wait. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Commerce extensions over. Um, CIC, Grand Market, Church, Moose, others. That's still in discussions, I believe. But we have done some moving. Clean Ohio, Green Space. <coughs> Pythian Sister, Guilford Boulevard, Green Space purchased. Parking expansion, parking facility, Pythian Sisters, change of properties finished. Uh, sidewalk curb replacement that's been work, been working on at uh, city parking lots that's still kind of open restrooms uptown that's finished uh, historic light poles adjoining the square that's I think that we decided to change that because we didn't get the historic ones around the square uh, modified version outdoor pool oh, yeah that one's finished three and a half to five million what's that that's, that's really high parking lot expansion Greenwood Park I think that's still open repair. Parks Maintenance Building, I think that's finished. Um, Multi-Purpose Trail, I, that, we did some of that, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. And the paving, Spring Grove Cemetery, new building, we've done that. So if there's more to add, more to talk about, I guess we have to figure out what direction we want to take on some of these capital items. I mean, <coughs> do we still there's think we need to do anything with the mini court? Is that all? Surveillance. Surveillance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and in the in the capital 301 account, I think there's still 4.2 million, 4.4 million. I don't have it on some, top of my head. So. I think there's something yeah. around there. It's still in the, uh, the capital 301 account. It's in the. I think so, the beauty court's on hold till we, you know, we judge? bring back in January. I, I think we already pretty much agreed that we're we're going to work with the judge and you know try to develop a plan that's consistent with what they need, but not beyond that. And I, I think that's where we thought we'd leave cost it. sensitive? Yeah, yeah. cost, yeah. Something that fits in 4.2 million. Well, I, I was thinking something that fits into a, a, that divided by five, probably. But yeah, I think we're looking at something far less that'll work work for the court, but work financially for, for us as well. And we might as well wait till January. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. To revisit that, yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, one, one thing that did make, make this, but uh, we've talked about it administratively here quite a bit, is the water line from Spring Grove to uh, at, at least uh, beyond the hospital there has been problematic over and over. And uh, it's quite pricey. What, what, what would pricey be, Pat? Uh, cost to redo the whole line is approaching about $2 million. So that's probably something that should be on here because it doesn't make sense to piecemeal it. I mean, we've literally had problems from Spring Grove to um, what, city limits. When does the bond come off on that? That's 2030, isn't it? One of the water bonds comes off in 27 and the other one in 33, I think. Mm -hmm. Can't wait down. Yeah, we have 43 water breaks in so two on that stretch. Since so two. Yeah. It should be a brand new line by now. Yeah, didn't we just no. talk about it not long ago and we compared how much new line would be and what it's costing us to just go out and fix what's going on? Didn't we? Well, it's it's cheaper to fix it. The problem becomes at the hospital and, and they have internal systems to fix it, but you know, then they have to switch over their water to an internal system because of dialysis and patient care and all of that. 
Um, and, and then the other is the interruption and inconvenience for folks, you know, all along their mm -hmm. businesses. <clears throat> Let me calculate. I'm sorry, Mayor. Go ahead. A break is about three thousand dollars. We expect overtime materials and mm -hmm. time and machines. So you look at forty, it's hundred twenty thousand plus. How many feet do you replace when it breaks? It, it depends. If, it, if it's a if it's a beam break, we just put a clamp on. Or if it's a blowout, sometimes we have to replace pipe. So every break is just a different scenario. Sometimes they do, if it's under a driveway, they definitely replace uh, pipe. Get out from I'm just wondering if at some point we do all the replacements. Maybe we should just keep replacing pipe every time we replace it. We put, put the more sure, chunk. Another another chunk. Joints and it's, it's yeah, get another chunk <laughs> after after ten years. Maybe you get a couple miles. I don't know. Well, of course, I don't know if you heard Dino, but um, <clears throat> then you have more and more joints instead of longer yeah, 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 and limited yeah. joints. So it's coupling joints, and small pieces and parts. Just Is make sense. No. More places to break down the road. Right. right. No. Absolutely. Patrick, we, we have a redundant water system, correct? Is there something we could do maybe to, uh, at least until we decide what we want to do, put the hospital on another portion of well, the water system? Well, from three different directions. Um, so it's hard to imagine the out of water uh, unless something catastrophic. But what, what I'm saying, so they don't have to go through all those changes when we have a break on the on the. Well, when you have, when you have a break, it, it always disturbs the water mm -hmm. system. Um, we can usually feed them with water, but sometimes it'll churn up the scaling and deposits and okay. some of their equipment is more sensitive. Okay. Well, that, I mean, this is from an enterprise fund, so I, I don't think it's going to be paid out of the general fund monies at all. I think it would be paid through an increase in some type of cost associated with the delivery or use of the water. Pat, do you foresee anything by the state coming up on 18 that if we waited a little bit longer? Would We've been through that with them. The 18 project, uh, it's ours to, if their project would interfere with our water line, it would be on their dime to you know, relocate the lines or build new. Mm -hmm. um, but, at, you know, 42, we paid almost a million dollars for that whole system. You know, that's out of our pocket, so to speak. Right. That would be the same on 18. They could add it to the project, but it would be There would be no cost savings? I don't think so. Plus, that's five, six years old. One thing I would mention to, to keep in mind, like you know, Wadsworth Road, we just finished that water line, phase two of it, with that zero interest loan from uh, Ohio Public Works Commission. That's probably always on the table if we want to think about that. And to fund this, it's a 20 year, I think, Keith, does that sound right? Yeah, that, that was 20 years. 20 years, zero interest. When that goes to the water and tourist committee, maybe think about how to pay that debt service off. Yeah, then they can spread it over a period of time. Two million over 20 years is peanuts, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've had a couple of residents in the last three or four months ask about our capital projects and ask, they said, we know that you do collaborations with the city school systems, uh, and these are people that, that play a lot of tennis and I don't know what, what the new pickleball or whatever the new game is with the panel, of course, but they were asking if the city would ever be interested in, since the city residents use the school facilities on the outdoor tennis courts that some of them are getting in bad shape. And I just read a recent article where we just bid them out, and they them out only one person bid, but they're working on getting a couple more and rebidding them. So, uh, and the, the two people that contact me was at different times, but they they had a group of people that that you know said you know we read that you guys you know do projects with the schools, that, that would be a, a, a good one to look at as helping with the school systems, tennis courts, and is it pickleball, is that what I'm looking at? You don't play that. No, no. Yeah, I mean, slot yeah, machines, yeah. I can do a slot machine. Are there other kind of items that people yeah. want to add? Mark? Well, I mean, it's been, probably, I don't know, Kimberly could update us, but um, we've talked in the past on there, we've talked in the past about a a southern interchange on 71. Um, yeah, to Pat, the Patrick and I were just up in OAC last week, and there, two of the things they were looking at was the the one at. Um, it doesn't really matter which which place it is, but it's the same cost, about 20 to 22 million, um, at uh, 57 and 71 or. 57 and 162. Mm -hmm. um, so they, at the Snowack meeting, they were specifically talking about that and specifically talking about the one 
at Boston and uh, 71. And I and, bring. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And the, and the reluctance with that. Now, now one thing that they did um, have on the, on, the, on the table that we had not seen before was um, instead of a full interchange, um, a northbound on ramp and a southbound off ramp at 57, which for, and, and it's about half the cost, about 10 versus 20. And I really believe that would alleviate um, what we're looking for to get some of the residential cars with another opportunity to get there, try to get some of the um, commercial traffic to follow 162 to Lake, because um, they could get off, get back on if they're going north. If they're going south, they could go down to three and jump back on. Um, so we, we, we're running out of time and the meters outside were only two hours for some of the folks over there. So we were in a parking lot, but um, they, had to, they had to rush rush off, so we didn't get too far with it. See, I think that should be on here. I mean, we talk about parking deck for economic development. I think if we, even with that cheaper option, have another access, not only for traffic flow for the South End residents, but for um, uh, opening up our industrial area a little more, uh, I Maybe think that's just on our square. Yeah, right. I mean, there's so many benefits from there that I think it's, trumps a lot of what we have on this list. So well, I think some of the issue is we don't have control. Right. It's not in the city limits. Yeah, but I mean, but, but this is the first time that Montville trustees are, are very interested oh, okay. as well because okay. they're, they're hearing it from their residents. You know, we, we built this nice house here and it takes us forever to get to work because right. there's no way to get to the interstate. So I think we should add that. So okay, are, we, are we talking about doing the second part of the study? Mayor, were they going to do that, the second part well, of that? That's, that? that's what was put on the table because okay. they were talking about paying for the study at the North End. I said, well, let's not get too hasty here, but North End, Boston, and so mm -hmm. Oh. I said, before we put all the money up there, right. let's talk about this, too. Um, and, and Hambly was, was there and speaking on it on our behalf as well. So. So I think there's multiple government jurisdictions that would benefit from the South End. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Sounds like a joint meeting. You're the king of them. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, ideas to add? or? I have one, thoughts? and I don't think it's a huge capital project, but um, we've been looking at the, uh, when you look at the historic district, we've been looking at, at businesses that are that are on the, the, the arms that go out of the square area. And if you go west, we're looking at the north side of East Liberty for development. And then I believe, you know, we're quite tied in now to the idea of the south side of West Liberty. And that would also then include the north side of West Washington. Um, but, but the south side of West Washington will never not be part of any, any, any new development. But if you, so if you look at those two arms that come out of the square and you have a business, um, the street lighting in most of the historic district, district is those 1922 lights. But if you look at those two arms, they don't have those lights. And as we go forward with the development down from Sully's on both sides of that street and, and, and the block across the street, that would be something we probably want to include in the development because that would continue to tie the square together because it's part of the historic district. But at the same time, the south side of West Washington from um, the yogurt store to Miss Molly's doesn't have the street lights either and it has overhead wires and that would be an area that we could improve I think the continuity from business to business you know from yogurt to the end of the block at Miss Molly's if in fact like the rest of the square we had those those, those um, utility lines buried and put the street lights in. I think that would be a help for people visually when they're, they come to town and they're looking to go place to place. Because I think most of the time when I've walked around, and I've been involved in this for a long time, I forget that there are these wings of the historic district that we've never really attended to. So if, if for my, I think it would be important to add that, that south side of West Washington to, as, a, as a project to have that done. And I don't have a cost, I don't know what the cost would be, but I know we could, we could get that done. So is that an addition? Because on the list it does say 15 expansion of historic light poles adjoining the square. Yeah, that was the idea. That's on, this that, is more Liberty. 
Yeah, this would be the west, the south side of West Washington, which is is right now never going to be redeveloped. You know, in, in, in our time. Well, I think we need to talk about this more. But I think that. If we could update the list and take things off that have been done, I think the Pythian sisters can come off finally because that we're, there's no control over that anymore. That that can come off. Uh, but the other stuff, I guess, is see, put on what's done again and then uh, see what we have left and have another discussion about what else we want to address and then we can prioritize them once we have the universe captured. Wow. All right. All right. Anything else to come before finance? Hearing nothing. The meetings adjourned.